Today we're going to look at Model Mommy for doing fixtures in our testing. First thing we're going to start out doing is installing Model Mommy with a pip install model underscore mommy. Model Mommy is great for generating data for using in our tests and has a great interface for generating those objects instead of writing your own custom code or using the built-in Django fixture. In a previous video we created a LAN party tracker and in this video we're going to resurrect that and actually do a little bit of work on it. Uh, we've converted it to a class-based view instead of using function-based views that we did. And the two views that we're going to look at are the index view, which is going to be a list view so we can see all of our lists. And if you look down at the query set specifically, we're only pulling in all active parties. That's also a modification of our model, so we can only show active parties on the main page. What we're going to want to do is that we're going to want to test that our query set only returns active party objects and leaves the non-active ones alone. The other view that we're going to test is party games view. The concept behind this is that when you go to a URL structure of party slash the primary key slash games, then it will list all of the games. The significance is if you look at the bottom of our get query set that we overrode, then we're actually we're only getting games that are related to the current party that we're trying to view, which it gets from the primary key in the URL. With that in mind, let's go ahead and take a look at doing some testing and seeing how we can generate this data so that these tests work. Now let's actually work with our tests. I've already bootstrapped some of the code, so what we need to worry about is writing our tests. First thing we're going to do is import model mommy. So we're going to do from model mommy import mommy. Next thing we need to do is do our first generation of data. We're going to do self.party equals mommy.make and then give it the model that we want to generate the data of. We're going to pass it a string of the app and then the model name. That way we don't have to do an import of that model. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to create our first test of test get query set. Inside of a class based view, get query set is the function that is called to get the query set for getting our data. And what we're going to do is we're going to print out the title because what happens is Model Mommy goes through and it inspects every single field that's in the model, and then if it is a required field, it generates the appropriate data, and then if it's not required, then it just leaves it blank. So as an example, in the title, since it's a character string, then it's just going to throw a random string in there of data. And it's not going to really make necessarily make any sense. And we can see that by printing out the result of the title of our party. And then when we run the test, we'll actually see this big old long line of random string. And that is the title of that particular object. If we'll jump back into our test and start writing it, we're going to do QS equals self.view.getQuerySet. That's the actual call to our query set method so that we can get it back. And then we're actually going to do an assertion that we get back a certain number of data elements. In this case, we're going to get four. Uh, we want four games, and then we're going to use the QuerySet.Count to get the count that's in our database. In order to do this, since the games are part of the party and is a in a many-to-many -many relationship, we need to actually create the game and add it to our party. To do that, we're going to do a loop, and we're going to iterate over it four times. And then inside of that loop, we're going to call our self.party, and then we're going to do .games.add. And inside of that add, we're actually going to use mommy.make again to make our game object with party.game. From there it's going to run four times and so it's going to add four objects. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the primary key to our keyword arguments since it's going to be required in our code. With all of that said and done, let's actually run our test. And as you can notice that it actually passed. So to show this actually work, let's change our code to a 5 because that's what we're expecting back and then when we run our test again it gets a failure and the assertion error is 5 is not equal to a 4. So I'm going to quickly change that back and we'll be ready to move on to the next part of our usage of Model Mommy. Moving on we're going to take a look at our next test, the index view test. In this case we're going to test our index view that we're only pulling in active parties. In order to do that, we need to create a new party object with mommy.make. 
And then this time we're going to actually add active equals true. Active is a field on the party model that we can set either to true or false. By default it's false, but we can actually set it to true. We can also set other fields as well, so we can do title equals something, description equals something, or whatever it is, and we can explicitly set it. And you can actually go further into it and define, if you have a foreign key relationship, you can use a double underscore to define even further down to get specific properties on your foreign key relationship set as well, similar to what you would do with a retrieve in the Django ORM using the double underscore. Anyway, now that we have our active party set, we're going to set another party that isn't active so that we have a better set of data to pull against. So since we're going to do the test get query set again and it's the same thing, we're just going to copy and paste the code from above and change 4 to 1, and that should be good. So if we actually run this, we'll actually see that it passes and we have two passing tests. Now this is great because it shows that there, there were two objects and we only pulled out one. But let's say we actually want to test a few more than just one just to be on the safe side. What we can do instead of doing a lot of mommy.makes is we can actually do a keyword argument of underscore quantity and then we can set that to whatever we want. In this case for active we're going to set it to two and then for our non-active we're going to set it to four so that we have a total of six objects in the database. And then in our test get query set, we're going to make sure that we only pull two out. And then when we run the test, our tests are still passing because we're only pulling out two. Now that we've done all of that, let's go back into our test and look at another feature of Model Mommy. As was mentioned earlier, you can explicitly define your properties of your model. And we're going to actually set the title property of our party. So if we're going to do something a little different and we want to, since we're creating a series of records, we want to actually have a unique title for each of them. So we're going to use a piece called a recipe and we're going to call the function in the recipe of seek so that everything in the title will actually show up as QuakeCon and then it'll be QuakeCon1 and QuakeCon2 because it sequentially iterates a number for each of the creations. And then of course we need to do an import of recipe. But we can actually see this happen if we will print out our query set after we run our test. And then when we run our test, you'll see in the array printout at the top we have QuakeCon1 and QuakeCon2. So this actually really helps you if you need to have a specific format for any of your, of any of your data that you have. And you can do a more full-blown recipe definition and then do modelmommy.makerecipe what I've actually found doing the way we've done it to be more useful in 90% of cases than defining a full recipe. There are a few instances where you'd want to make that, make that, and if you run into those, please feel free to check out the documentation to get a better understanding of how to do it. And that's it for Model Mommy. We've covered pretty much most of the features of Model Mommy and, it, and how it really helps you to generate your data for when you're doing your tests. This will speed up writing your tests a lot because it gives you a lot of flexibility in creating test data. That way you don't have to bootstrap your own data creation functions or deal with the unwieldiness of doing fixtures with Django.